The problem is you need a certain functionality for an application and you're pretty sure that someone somewhere has already created it and it's part of a library or a framework that is out there. However, there are so many JavaScript library and frameworks. How do you go about even finding it? And then once you found it, how do you know that it's a piece of code that you want to use within the project which you're working on? In this movie, I'm going to cover three resources that can help you identify JavaScript libraries and frameworks. They won't be the definitive voice on whether you should use them or not, but they can help you make that decision. They can explain what it's about. They can provide some sort of ranking. But basically, these three sites can give you the information you need to make a decision. So the three sites that we're going to take a look at is javascripting.com, microjs.com, which is for smaller libraries, and then GitHub itself. So first, javascripting.com. Here is their site. And I found this to be one of the best sources for libraries and frameworks on JavaScript and being able to identify certain features about them. Now, first thing I want you to notice is there's some categories down the left here. So right now, the all items category is selected. And so all of the libraries and frameworks that are part of this are showing up. But you can narrow that down with different categories. For example, you want a library that works with the DOM. Well, you can access that particular category and see those that are available. You also have the ability to search. Say there's some feature you want you can enter that as a search term. This now is showing everything that has something to do or mentions the DOM as a part of its description. Let me jump back to all items and also show you, you have three tabs at the top as well. Popular, new, so new libraries and frameworks, and trending, so those that seem to be currently more popular. You can move between those three tabs as well. Now in the popular tab, they show up by ranking. And so you can see here on the right, the ranking that they have been given. Now that ranking is determined by javascripting.com. It is basing a lot of its information on GitHub which if you're not familiar with GitHub, you should become familiar with it, but it's a common repository for code projects, libraries, frameworks, all sorts of things. And so the ranking that is generated by javascripting.com is based on stars that are received on GitHub, commits, authors, and forks of that project. So they have some formula for combining those four pieces of information to determine the ranking. And you can see some of the ones that are up here at the top, React and Angular towards the top. Looks like four of them right now have a 99% rating based upon those four criteria. Now let me go in a little deeper. So each one of these libraries or frameworks that show up, you can click on and access more information about. So I've clicked on Angular and basically it's pulling information about Angular and displaying it here in the website. You have a link on the left to go to the homepage for Angular if you want more information or go directly to the GitHub repository for that particular library. And depending on the library or framework you click on, there, there may be additional information as well. For example, with Angular, we have an about section which describes it. Then we have a list of CDNs that we can access and then it will actually show the repository as well which we could access by going directly to GitHub. Now across the top here, we have our rating. That's the current rating for the product I'm looking at. It then shows the number of watchers on GitHub. And so this is the number of people that have indicated they want to be notified about certain things that occur with this particular library. This next set of data is the average length of time between commits. It can let you know whether 
people are currently working on it or not, or it's been latent for some time and nobody's done a commit for a while. But the average length of time between commits right now for Angular is 17 hours. This here is the number of forks that have made from the project. Now, the number of forks can indicate to you the popularity of this particular code base. So as you can see, Angular has a large number of forks that have been made. And then finally, within the last 100 commits, how many contributors have there been? That can give you an idea of the number of people that are interested in this project and therefore working on it. So that's the information you find across the top. Now, you may also find badges as a part of the information that is presented. In this case, it's presented a badge for a continuous integration service. Now, basically what that is, is it takes the code base and integrates it. It does, it, it does testing. And so basically it's telling you that it is passing with this continuous integration service. And, and this particular one, if you click on it, it will take you to that website. This particular one happens to be Travis CI. There are others in here as well that are some, sometimes show up. But that's what that badge tells you. I'm going to search for a library I've used in the past, Swiper, because I want to show you some different badges as well. Glitter is the chat system on GitHub. And so when you see a badge for Glitter, you can go out and see what kind of chat has occurred around this particular library. Here's build again. So that continuous integration service showing us passing. There's also a badge for development dependencies. It basically indicates the freshness of those dependencies. And so it's indicating here that they're up to date. So you'll find different badges that can give you information about the library or framework as well. So this is a great resource for looking for and searching for libraries or frameworks you may want to integrate and then finding information about those. Now another resource that I've discovered only recently is microjs.com. Now this focuses on very small libraries. As you can see, it indicates the size of the library as a part of the graphic that represents the library. So you can immediately see the size of it. Now, the information provided is very basic. You do have on the left side the number of stars. So it's basing on GitHub information again and the number of forks. So that can help you to see the popularity of that particular library. If you click on it, it will take you to the GitHub repository for that. I'm going to jump back. Now, there are a couple of ways to search through the libraries that are shown on this site. One is you could type something in. For example, I want to find everything that mentions jQuery in the description. So here it shows uh, everything that seems to mention jQuery. All right. Now, another way you can search is if you just click on this search box, it will bring up several different categories or tags you can use for finding libraries. So if I want a JavaScript animation, there we go. I can now see several libraries that come up for that. If you click this little icon to the right, you can then see the tags that are associated with each of the libraries. That can help you identify the purpose of that library as well. So another great source, but all of the libraries you're going to find here are not going to have the popularity of those on JavaScripting. There may be some that cross the two sites, but these are focusing more on small libraries. So the thing you need to keep in mind is that they probably have not been used as much as those you'll find on JavaScripting. So you'll want to do some testing or you'll want to do some looking at the code to make sure you're not incorporating something that may not be completely safe. Now, since both of these sites are based on GitHub, it makes sense that we should look at GitHub as well when we're looking for 
libraries and frameworks. And you can do that pretty easily if you go to github.com slash explore. There you will see project showcases. Now remember, GitHub includes repositories for all sorts of languages, not just JavaScript. And so you'll need to sift through things a bit more, but this can be a way to find libraries and frameworks as well. On the Explore page, you'll see project showcases. For example, front-end development. And down here, it's indicating that there's two languages that are a part of the repositories for front-end JavaScript frameworks. So if I click on that to go see those repositories, it then gives me a list of them. And if I place my mouse over up here at the top, the part that indicates two languages, I can see what those languages are, JavaScript and HTML. And I can see the different repositories that are brought up for that. Now, if you click on the showcases link up here at the top, you're also given a search box for searching the showcases. So for example, I could type in front end JavaScript. And here's some of the showcases that appear. Then I could further access them to see the repositories that are a part of it. So another way to work through those showcases and repositories to help find what you're after. Finally, you may be interested in the trending category as well. It's up here at the top. So these are things that are currently trending, currently um, popular on GitHub. And sometimes you may find something that is of interest to you there. So three resources to help you as you're searching different libraries and frameworks. I hope you found that helpful. If so, please like the video. To view other videos from our channel, you can click the video link in the middle of the page. To subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We add new videos each week. And to visit our website for other resources on JavaScript, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.